Hello everyone, I'm Oliver from Blenders.com and in this video tutorial I'll show you how to create this snowman scene in Blender. In this first part of 2, we'll see how to model every part of the snowman using some cool modeling tricks along the way. It's very cold so let's go inside Blender and warm up. So we need to start by creating a polysphere and I will show you now what is a polysphere. Now if we go here and create a mesh with Shift A we can just see that we have a Nubia Sphere and an Icosphere. Now the Icosphere is not uh, probably the best option. It may be useful for some cases, but uh, it's made of uh, triangles completely, so it's not useful most of the times. And the UV Sphere is uh, kind of weird. It's the usual one, but it's something like this. So as you can see, uh, in the middle part of it, it's uh, made of squares, but as we approach to the poles of the sphere, the polygons are completely stretched out and uh, here we have a lot of long, very long triangles which makes the topology uh, a mess to work with. It's very useful for some cases though because it allows us to create things like eyes, okay, because we have a circular, sh circular shape here, okay, and this is uh, very nice for creating eyes and another type of objects, but uh, for usual objects with uh, spherical forms uh, is not the best way to, to go because uh, the topology is not completely uniform. So we need a uniform um, topology and the way we do that is by creating a polysphere. A polysphere is a sphere created, created completely by squares, all right, polygons of four sides. So we can go here to the modifiers, add a subdivision surface to our cube, and as you can see, we get a sphere, which is a polysphere, right, completely created by um, a series of four-sided polygons. Now what we need to do is to add on top of this, because this is not completely a square, I mean it's not completely spherical, if you can see it's kind of uh, a little squared yet. Okay, let's um, go here and apply uh, cast, okay, and here we select the sphere, and as you can see now it is. Uh, it should be more spherical. If we put this on one, this should be completely, absolutely a sphere. If we create a new sphere, newbie sphere, you can see how the shapes are mostly the same. Okay, completely spherical. So that is really nice because now we have a four-sided sphere. What we need to do now is to just apply these modifiers and we already have our polysphere. Nice, so uh, this will be the head of our snowman. So let's put it up, let's duplicate it, and scale it, this will be the body, something like this, all right. There we go, we can scale this a little on the C-axis, something like this, and this bring it down a little bit. That's right, okay. Now, what comes next? We can apply a subdivision to this one uh, so they have uh, more or less the same uh, amount of polygons because otherwise this one has, you know, uh, both of them has the same number of polygons but this one is much bigger. So we need a similar amount of polygons. So apply this subsurf so we can edit it and uh, we can actually go ahead and sculpt it to, um, let's go here, object mode, sculpt mode. Select here the ta -ta -ta, grab and with F we can increase the size of the brush and with Shift F we can increase or decrease the strength of the brush. Okay, so let's just change it a little bit, something bigger. So to make it to make it a, a little more organic, okay? Because if we make a snowman, uh, chances are. Uh, we cannot achieve a perfect sphere <laughs> unless we are completely artists uh, like Michelangelo or something like that and uh, Well, that can be the case actually if but if you if you uh, if you can do a completely spherical a perfect sphere uh, snowball uh, Please uh, t shoot a photo and send me <laughs> Okay, so this is a little more organic now Let's do the same with the head. Um, we have to go to the object mode, select the other one, and sculpt mode. Actually, uh, with control, I think we can select different objects during the sculpt mode, but well, 
let's keep it this way. Make it bigger with F. Remember that shortcut, F and shift, shift F for changing the size and the strength of our brush. Keep tweaking this one. Okay, something that like this uh, would do it. All right. Now I want to create the scarf. Okay, so the scarf, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, instead of creating a new object and stuff, what I will do is to uh, take uh, advantage of uh, some objects we already created. So I will just duplicate this loop that I selected pressing Alt and right click. And so I can press uh, Shift D, duplicate it. Press uh, right mouse button to uh, deselect it, I mean to, to um, cancel the movement, and we can press P selection. This way, if we go out of the edit mode with tab, we can just select it, okay, there we have it, and this is a new object. So we can now just uh, press E and C to extrude it like this, and we, we can press S and C again to scale it, press zero, and so now this will be completely horizontal. Right, so bring this down a little, like that. Alt, right click to select the loop, and bring this down again. Uh, select everything with A, and just move it around, because now we need to adjust it to the, to the face and stuff. But first, what I'm gonna do first, is to apply a solidify modifier and just increase the thickness and you can see that it's uh, not working uh, exactly as I expected. <laughs> All right, this is because we extruded it from here so the normals may be uh, a little off. So we can press Control N to adjust the normals and uh, actually, mm, okay, here the offset, let's put it on to 1. All right, so the normals are extruded out and not in. Okay, so now we have this, uh, this pretty cool scarf. Now let's increase a little the thickness and let's apply a subdivision surface, something like that, uh, with two subdivisions, something like this. And now just work with this. Okay, so now we have to adjust it to the face. And for that, I'm going to apply again a subdivision surface to this one and another to the body, all right, so we have a more accurate um, idea of how it's going to look, to look like uh, next. So let's just move these guys. We don't need to be perfect with this because uh, it's actually a scarf, which is a piece of cloth, and uh, you know, it's something organic. So if we are too perfect, if we make a perfect cylinder for this, uh, it will look a little odd. So if we keep it like uh, more natural, it's, it's better. Bring them closer to the face and bring this closer as well, something like that. Okay, and now let's do the same with the body. Something like that. As you can see, I'm moving uh, only one from each two because if we move this uh, edge, we are moving this vertex. And if we move this edge, we are moving this vertex. So there is no need to go one by one. There we go. Okay, so we are done. Now, this is the, let's decide which is the front uh, side of the, of the snowman, and I think this is the front side. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is to open here a little hole. 
because now what I'm going to do is to select this face, Shift D to duplicate it, and uh, let's um, rotate it like this with R. Now rotate it like this with R again. Just move it into it, the, the snowman, into the scarf, something like that, bring it down a little. And we can now select the edge. I'm, I'm switching uh, by pressing Control tab So press the, the, the edge and extrude it, something like this. Bring it up a little. And this is like, uh, it, it, this is not realistic, of course, but uh, it will do for this for this um, exercise. All right, so now we have the shape of the scarf going up there and we can, with Control R, add another loop here to make it end in a little, you know, not a very subdivided uh, way. Something like this, and we can probably add another uh, loop there. Keep in mind that I press Control R, I select where I want to add the loop, press uh, left click to accept, you can slide it and press it again uh, with, the, with left click to accept where you want it or press just right click to leave it in the middle. So this way I can just do a little adjustment like this. Okay, so now we have our snowman and our scarf. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is to select every object with A and go here to the toolbars and uh, select smooth. Let's make it a smooth, all right. Now let's add more detail, a little more detail to the scar because here it is, um, you know, touching the face, here is touching the body, but uh, in the middle there is actually a hole. So let's just add another, you know, add a loop with control R. We can scale it down to make it fit a little that shape. Something like this, this is nice. So now let's go into the carrot, let's create a carrot. So what I'm gonna do is to create a cylinder. Okay, let's go here. Um, do it a little, you know, six vertices will be enough and the radius and depth doesn't matter, so I'm gonna model it now. So we have something like this. Now I, I'm gonna model it apart or actually leave it there in the middle and press a slash in the numpad or just go here to view and let me see where it is uh, here, view, global or local. And what this does is isolate this object. So now here we have the user perspective local, which means that we are only seeing the, the object that we had selected, all right? So the, the rest of them had been hidden and you can see that there is no layers uh, anymore, all right? So uh, we can keep working on this to focus ourselves only on this object and then we can press a slash again in the numpad to go back to the original scene. All right, to unhide every object. So let's model the, the carrot. So I'm going to select this, uh, the top part of this, scale it down a lot and bring it up. And what I'm actually gonna do is to, you know, I don't want this to be a, an angon, I want it to be a square, I mean, a squared polygons. So just let these two vertices press J and they will be joined. So now we have, Instead of one end gone, uh, we have uh, two four-sided polygons. Just do the same down here, uh, J, okay. And now let's figure out the shape of the carrot. So let's bring this down a little. And one by one, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to add a uh, little um, new loops and move them and scale them, right? something like this. So control R, left click, drag to select where we want it, left click again, and now scale it to adjust the shape. Okay, keep in mind that you have uh, enough subdivisions because now we are going to divide it again to make that uh, kind of holes the carrots have. So uh, what I'm going to do is to add a subdivision surface to see the final shape. Okay, so let's select these guys. I, I did the lasso select by pressing control and dragging the left click button and 
So scale this down. Okay, something like that. Add a subdivision here, add another one here, another one here, another one here, here, and here. Then we can adjust them a little bit. And just do it again. So one here, one here, here, here. There are lots of ways to do this faster. <laughs> okay, we could still divide them uh, just selecting all the loops and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm going pretty fast. And sometimes you don't uh, stop to think about the best way to do something uh, because it is it's something really simple. And, you know, as they are not so many, uh, you can just go ahead and do it this way manually. So now what I'm going to do is to select this way alternatively because these ones are going to be scaled in a minute like this. And now I press S for scale and shift C. So as you can see now, the, the X and Y axis have been highlighted and I can do something like this, right? To scale only in X and Y, something like that. Let's exaggerate these ones a little bit. And this, of course, uh, doesn't look very natural. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is to add a little more, a few more subdivisions around here. Right to play a little with this shape. And now what I'm going to do is to use press O or go here and select connected or enabled. So we have a soft selection activated and we can start playing with this to make it look uh, a lot more organic. All right, as you drag uh, to move uh, stuff, if you um, move the scroll wheel of your mouse, you will increase or decrease the amount of the soft selection. Really nice tool. So yeah, just play with this as, as long as you want. Or you can uh, sculpt the carrot instead of uh, modeling it this way. You know, I'm just uh, going very quick because we have several things to do in this uh, in this tutorial, and uh, I don't want it to take infinite amount of time. Okay, so we have this now. Let's just uh, do some very big adjustments to kind of you know with Alt and right click to select a full loop. And to give the the carrot a more interesting shape, not just a straight one. Okay, so we can rotate this. Something like that. Okay, now press smooth. Okay, it's kind of uh, an interesting shape. Press slash in the numpad. And now just uh, move it up. Put it in the nose area. Uh, rotate it in the x-axis. And there we have our nose. It's amazing. <laughs> And crazy nose. It could be like a hat or something for a, an elf. Uh, well, it's kind of cool. So let's move it here and place it uh, something like that. And we can rotate it a little. It's actually. Slide it down. We can probably make it even more organic by also moving it in this uh, this way. Um, there we go, and there we go. Okay, a pretty interesting nose, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have our nose. Now let's make our the the mouth of this uh, of this guy. So we can just select these few guys. Press I to insert something like this. Select these ones, 
and extrude in. As you can see, it's not a very happy expression, right? <laughs> so we are going to make uh, we we're, we're going to make it uh, look a lot happier. Um, so just select these guys, and uh, with the soft selection at, still activated, we can kind of model a smile in his face. Bring this up and create this nice smile for it. So he's, it, he's smiling now and we can't even bring this side more to the top because he's really happy. Can you see it? <laughs> okay, so a cool smile. So the reason why I put uh, I took these uh, faces in the inner mouth uh, a lot to the back is because later, um, you know, when we illuminate the scene, we are going to depend on this cavity to draw the the, the mouth with shadows, right? So if it's very very slight. We're probably going to see it, but uh, it, it's going to be a little difficult. This way, it's going to generate some uh, nice shadows inside, all right? Some dark shadows inside, and that will allow us to to see a little better the smile. Okay, so uh, this is it, and uh, wow, just wow! <laughs> Look at that. Well, I just have to. Um, what the hell? Let's try to rotate the, the face. <laughs> Shift S, uh, cars to selected. Just click here and uh, press dot in the keyboard. All right, so we rotate around the cursor and just move this. And well, this is my my bad, okay? I, it was an error of me. So now I have to adjust this uh, <laughs> these faces. Um, okay, let's... Uh, with O or just clicking here, disable the soft selection and we have to adjust the scarf again. I mean, probably you don't. Uh, I, I have, I have because um, didn't pay enough attention. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't pay attention. I was, uh, you know, astonished by the cool nose of this guy and uh, couldn't help but put it on uh, in the opposite in the opposite side okay there we go all right this this will do it okay now now it's a lot better all right so now let's model the hat of this guy and as we did before just start from here so select this loop press shift D right click and P selection so we can just go and select this one now Okay, and uh, I can select this, press S, C, 0, and so now we have a plain circle. All right, it's not completely circle because uh, we sculpted the face of the guy, but uh, it's kind of adjusted to the, to the shape of the head. Okay, so now let's go to the edit mode and uh, we can start extruding. And so, extrude like this. Now we can extrude inside like this, or maybe use a fill grid. Yeah, Control F and grid fill, and let's see what we can do with this. The offset, span. All right, this looks a little better. There we go. This is the this is the point. Okay, and now from here, we can extrude, press X, S, I mean, <laughs> to, to scale. Okay, now let's press Control R and drag a, a netch up there, a loop, and another one down here to just increase the shape of the hat. And now let's put this here, bring it down with G. Alt and right click to select this loop and bring it a little up like this. Okay, and now we can play with the shape of this a little like this. Exactly. And what else can we do? Okay, let's just 
add here a solidify modifier and the solidify modifier I'm gonna put it on top of the subsurf okay this way I can increase the thickness something is weird here so I select uh, I go into the edit mode I select everything with A and press Control N this way all the normals are uh, put together and um, let's make the offset at zero so it grows on both sides and uh, what else let's increase the subdivisions you know, this looks looks pretty nice but looks pretty nice until we are going here to just go to the vertices press O to turn on the soft selection and let's start playing with it because I want it to be a lot more organic than this okay so let's make it a lot organic very organic just move shapes around until we are happy I mean I'm happy already but if, if this is a little more organic I will be happier <laughs> all right all right so here we have it now let's go here and press smooth so we smooth it out and now bring it down to adjust it to the to the to the head of the guy this is pretty cool okay we may even rotate it around a little like this or maybe not maybe not because later later we are going to put the camera here and I want to see from the camera the top of the of the hat and all this area because we want to store some um, some snow there all right and the way to do it uh, I mean if if the if the hat is like this we are not going to see those areas right so let's put it something like this and here is an intersection be careful with that and there we go okay Okay, so now let's create a button, the buttons that we are going to use for the eyes. So let's uh, first go to the top view with seven. And what I can do is to press shift A and create a new circle. And this circle we have eight uh, vertices. This will be enough. And uh, what I'm gonna do here, let's see. Okay, let's uh, fill it with an hang on because I'm going to divide it now manually and press slash in the number again to just focus on this uh, area. So what I'm going to do is to just go ahead, uh, extrude this, scale it in, or we can uh, actually select everything and press I to inset, right? And do something like this. Now what I'm going to do is to select these vertices, press J to join them, these two, J to join them, and we have this. So this is basically what I need at the moment. Okay, I can just select all this and extrude them up a little, something like this. And now what I'm gonna do is to actually delete all this. And I'm going to explain to you now why. Why should I delete this? I'll tell you. I selected again this with the lasso tool, which is control, then left click, drag. Okay, so now we have only one quarter of our button, which is exactly what we need. And again, I'll tell you why right now. So uh, we have this, uh, we can just select everything, move it a little up, and I'll tell you why right now. So uh, we are going to work in a quarter because now we, can, we have to create a hole here it would be very re repetitive to just have to create that hole four different times in uh, different parts of the of the button. So what I'm gonna do instead is to work on one quarter, create one hole, and the rest uh, replicated with mirrors. So let's go to the top view so you can see it, and let's add a modifier, a mirror modifier. Let's make this a little bigger so you can see this. So this will be the left right mirror in the x-axis and activate clipping. So the uh, vertices in the middle uh, snap with each other. Collapse it, okay? And let's create a new mirror modifier. 
this will be the top button um, mirror there we go and this will work in the i y axis and activate the clipping collapse it again let's create a new mirror modifier and this will be called depth mirror activate the clipping and this one will work in the c axis so as you can see now we have the depth as well so we can just go here select these two edges move them down and they will be clipping there and uh, all the rest of the quarters of the uh, of the button are already working as we expect them to work so what I'm, I'm gonna do now is to create the hole in this uh, in this area so let's press extrude and uh, right click scale okay and we have a problem here we actually need to inset there we go uh, what, what's happening is that the scaling which is something that you know is exactly the same that the insetting or almost the same and uh, I used to use that method, all right? Uh, but in this case, it's better the, using the inside because in the scaling, uh, when we um, press right click to cancel the extruding and uh, start to scale, what happens is that these vertices here in the borders are already clipped and we cannot move them unless we go back and disable the clipping in the mirror modifiers, okay? This option. So in this case, I just uh, used the uh, inset. Now we are going to use um, loop tools which is this uh, few nice tools here. And uh, the way you can activate them is to go to the prefer preferences or pressing Control Alt U. And here in the add-ons, just search for loop. And uh, this is the one. You just activate it and you will have these options. So now I select this one, I press circle, and it will be converted into a square. Now, uh, a square is not a circle, of course, but a four-sided circle is a square. So it's what we need any, anyway. So just, uh, all right, leave it there because we can move them later. Now extrude it to the middle and there is clipped. All right, now press X, delete the face, and we already have our hole. And we have four holes in our button, which is almost done already. So add a new modifier with a subdivision surface, add two subdivisions so we can see better what we are doing. And now probably we want this um, this holes to go a little more to the middle like that okay something like that you can see how we can uh, do crazy stuff with them but let's leave them like here and we can work and make it smaller or bigger you can see that it's much more easy now uh, because uh, we only have to work in one of the holes and the rest of them will be done automatically so we can very easily tweak them okay so okay leave it there and probably make it a little smaller and uh, now just go here like this press circle and move it around so this way the vertices surrounding the hole are not stretched right like these ones these ones are already in a plain area. We don't care too much about them. And actually, if we go here and press the smooth, it should look right. Okay, so this is kind of our uh, our button. And um, yeah, this is it. So we can probably work a little more and, uh, you know, add some details. For example, just go here and add a few loops here so it looks more... something like that yeah so this is the point okay so we have our button and uh, now we have to place it on the um, you know on the face of the of our guy so uh, let's actually go press a slash in the numpad so we are here and let's let's put it you are here <laughs> always in the opposite side I don't know what ha what ha why that's happened. Uh, right, so make it smaller. Now just go here and place it. 
I was watching Troy the other day, and this remembers me uh, when someone died, and uh, they put like the, the coins in the eyes for the for Caronte, and this is remembering that to me. Okay, now press Shift X and just move it to the other side. Rotate it a little so it's more so it's not exactly the same position, and just move it a little, a little more. Move it a little down. And even if we want to make it like, you know, like if it was a different uh, a different button or something, we can make it a little smaller. All right. So there we have our guy. Okay, next step. Uh, let's make the face and the body feel like they are snow. So we are going to add some displacement to them. So let's go here and uh, actually increase a little the subdivisions. All right quite some uh, an important amount and uh, let's go here and add a displacement modifier which is here displace there we go and this is really cool we are done <laughs> all right just joking of course um, so let's go here and uh, create a new texture and this texture will be called face display fit displays there we are direction will be normal for example let's control a little the strength and you can see that mostly we don't have to do anything else it's already pretty interesting something like that so it feels more like uh, snow now um, if we go here to the textures here we can select some uh, of the things so here is the displays face displays and here we can tweak this uh, you know the size of the of the noise as you can see right this is uh, I feel something pretty cool already okay so now we have to go to the body and what I'm gonna do is to actually select the body press shift and select this one press ctrl C and I think this is something that you have to as well enable it in the add-ons so if you go here uh, copy all right this is the copy attributes menu which is very very handy for these situations um, so you can press ctrl C and copy modifiers all right or copy the selected modifiers because I only need the displays I already have a subsurf in it so there we have it and we go here and uh, add some subdivisions like four and now what we can do is to tweak uh, this uh, this thing uh, okay let's go here to the texture and actually let's click here to make it unique and instead of face displays I'm gonna call it body body displays all right so now if we go here this is body displays there you have it and here this is the face displays so now we can tweak this texture and it doesn't uh, it is not going to affect the face all right so this is what we need exactly because now we can like decrease a little the the size of this uh, texture so it fits the size of the face um, but not, uh, you know, so we can tweak them separately. So this with uh, this is kind of cool, and we can probably increase or decrease the strength. 0 0.05. All right, I think that's uh, kind of very similar. All right, now we want to uh, make uh, some uh, snow here in the hat, and uh, this is gonna be very simple, as you will see now. So let's let the areas where we want some snow. I want all the top covered on snow. There we go, and uh, even just pick uh, uh, something like this, all right? So we can play a little with snow uh, falling through the sides of the of the hat. There we go even here as well a little and now uh, some parts of the hat here something like that is is cool so we press shift D right click P selection so now we have another thing here that we can move up and we kind of already have some snow there right let's press control and let's see how this is working all right something like that 
So what I need to do now is to actually uh, tweak the solidify settings. All right, probably some more thickness or tweaking the offset a little or maybe leave it like it is. We're going to tweak it manually. So these guys here, let's press O to activate the soft selection because we need to move it uh, like that. And uh, instead of uh, enabled, I'm, I'm going to use the connected mode. Because the connected mode, we, 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 what it will do is that if, um, you know, these uh, vertices here are connected, but these are not connected to this area. All right, if we press L, we can select the connected vertices. You can see that these uh, are alone. So if we move this area, the soft selection won't affect this area, which is exactly what we need uh, right now. So let's move this. Let's make some adjustments up there. Just make this like, uh, you know, some bulge or something that because there is a lot of no, uh, snow in the, in the head. Move this down a little. So as you can see, it's pretty, pretty funny to do this. <laughs> I, I love to create this kind of organic things. It's, I enjoy a lot doing it. All right, so we kind of have already the, the top of the hat. Now let's uh, play a little with these ones. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is to select this edge and ex extrude it and bring it down like this. Like it is a piece of snow falling through the side of the of the hut. Something like that and again create some bulging here to to make it appear like uh, you know we have a lot of um, snow there. And we can probably extrude this and make it like grow through the wall of the of the hat scale it a little make sure that everything is touching the surface because it's very easy to miss it and do something like this but then it's not touching the surface and it looks a little unnatural Right. Also, we have to keep in mind that this is uh, some kind of cartoony effect. I mean, I'm not uh, looking for uh, exceptional realism here in this scene, but uh, well, if we can do it better, mm, we have to do it better. So let's actually play with this again, uh, extrude it and make it fall down a little. If we put it like this, it looks like there is a, a little amount of snow there, something like that. But we have to make sure that it doesn't go like this, <laughs> right? Because if it's under the hat, it looks, uh, you know, we are not seeing it in this uh, from this shot because the camera will be uh, looking like this. So we are not going to see the under under the hat. But well, it is better to have it. In a nice way, so we can keep keep strewing this and do something interesting with it, like that. All right, next thing uh, we have to select this. Uh, probably select this uh, now. This press Control C and copy selected constraints. Uh, no, sorry, copy selected modifiers. And uh, what's going on? Solidify and subserve. Let's this one and now this one. Okay, I, I did it in the wrong order. All right, copy selected modifiers and I want to copy the displays. Keep in mind that the last one you have to select is the one with the actual modifiers. I just missed that. Okay, so here we have our displays, but the subsurf is not enough, so we can increase the subdivisions and uh, well, it's actually working pretty, ho pretty cool. I mean, I don't think we even need to uh, change the displays uh, for the hat, okay? Well, it's kind of working pretty cool. All right, so we can just close this, uh, close this, and close the solidify effect. 
So as you can see, we already have our snow in the hat and it already looks like uh, snow. Uh, the next thing we could do is to just create the floor and stuff. And the, the way I'm gonna do it is, uh, you know, kind of probably not the better way, the best way to do it, but um, I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, because for this, I'm just going to duplicate the body. Make it a lot bigger, scale it down, and actually let's go to the front view and select the bottom part, because we don't need it, and delete it. So now we can just play with it, you know, scale it down, play with it like this. Okay, even go ahead and modify the shape. And we already have some kind of floor. So, and as we, as you can see, we already uh, have our displays and everything set up. So we just move it up. So the surface is touching the the snowman's uh, face. And what I'm gonna do here is to actually um, add one more division subdivide. Okay. And now I'm gonna play with this a little. So the surroundings of the snowman kind of better fits uh, the snowman itself. So let's, uh, the display is uh, not gonna see it, but let's see the subsurf effect. And this way we can also play a little more with the, you know, more detail to the surface. As I said, this is not the best way to do it, but it's kind of uh, a different way to do it. Uh, lot faster but not very accurate and not very efficient to be honest because uh, as you can see now we have a lot of uh, polygons in the borders and stuff but well it will do for this uh, for this image so we can play with this and and there we go Okay, actually, let's do it like this because I, I was working again in the wrong side. <laughs> okay, so now let's uh, try to probably um, go to the texture, the body displays, click here to make it single again, and uh, put here floor displays. There we go. And now we can decrease the size, maybe, like 005, even less. Something like that, that could do it, or probably a little more. 01. All right, that's not a lot, but it's good. And we can uh, probably reduce the strength of it. Um, 0 0.01 maybe, or 0 0.03. If we increase this, what happens? Okay, let's make it a little bigger. 0 0.2. Okay, this is a little better, and we can go here and put 0 0.02. Uh, and even 0 0.01, let's check. 1.5. Oh, 1.5, there we go. Like this, all right. So uh, now before proceeding uh, farther, what I'm gonna do is to actually make sure that the views, uh, the views of surface and the render one are the same, All right? To make sure that then uh, when we actually render the final scene, it renders at five subdivisions, all right? And now the view, we can just decrease it to work more smoothly. 
So increase this to four, increase this to four as well, and here increase it to four. All right. So now instead of uh, reducing these uh, guys to two subdivisions, what I'm going to do is actually make sure that the uh, buttons and stuff is not, uh, you know, there are no intersections on top of them with the snow. All right. And also, uh, another thing that I would like to show you is the simplify option. Because if we go here to the scene, we have this option at the bottom, which is simplify. And if we open it, we can just press one, for example, and all the subdivisions uh, in the scene will turn to one, which will make it a lot easier to work. So you can see one, we can increase it to two, to three, and it will affect the whole scene. All right. Of course, if some object is in the level two in the in 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 their modifier, if we turn here to four or five, it will only turn up those objects that are actually uh, having them. This one, for example, is not increasing, as you can see because we have it set up to three, all right? Well, actually, yeah, yeah, exactly. If we go to five, this object keeps being the same. So let's keep it on two, for example. So we already have our snowman model. Uh, we have the body, the face, the buttons, the carrot, the hat, the snow on the hat. So there is still a lot of stuff missing, like uh, the background, we have to add some mountains, the snow, the compositing. So uh, I decided to just cut this tutorial in two parts and this has been the first part so far. So in the next part we will do everything that is missing and finish the project. So uh, I hope you liked it and see you in the next part.